Hi, everybody. I hope it's OK if I take photos of this session. Is there anyone not, not OK with that? You can cover your face, perhaps. So I work at Momoto. I was at uh, Media Evolution, the conference, two years ago. Uh, there was a really, really good uh, talk here by Amber Case. Uh, who is a cyber anthropologist. She really clued me into the, design, the, the principle of calm design, of calm products. Products that don't uh, bring so much noise to our, our uh, presence so that we ha have to spend too much time thinking about them. And that's a principle that I've uh, been inspired by when developing the concept of Memoto. Two years ago, it was a crazy dream of mine to create a wearable camera. Two years later, right now, it's reality. To me, to me that's amazing. It's amazing that I can do it and that any, any of us can dream up something and then create it out of nothing else than our dreams. And to do that, I had to reinvent how we think about um, cameras from scratch. And um, fortunately, I had lots and lots of research to rely on. There's been research going on for about tw 25 or 30 years in what, ha when ha what happens when you have a wearable camera. So what we came up with was a device um, uh, which is really small and light. And you can have it in a range of colors depending on how visible you want it to be. And really, what uh, is the problem, the, the major challenge facing wearable technology? And this is not only in my eyes, but really what was the conclusion um, from a panel on this, this topic at a wearable conference in, in Toronto, where I w was two months ago. The major challenge for wearable technology is to find new form factors of how we can wear technology um, that is not too, uh, too much in your face, so to speak, and uh, that not, doesn't create new habits that are too hard to, to evolve. So perhaps some of you have heard the story about Sony when they were going to launch the Walkman. There were huge resistance inside Sony to the idea that you would actually wear like plugs into your ears with, with wires going out of your head. There was like one engineer pro um, promoting this idea that people would actually do that. And the rest of the organization were totally against it. They said, it's impossible. No one will ever look like an, a jerk or an idiot with wires sticking out of their heads. But so Sony took a chance, launched the Sony Walkman with it, the, the earplugs that is now seen. I, I think most of you probably have five of them, not, if not on you, then at home. So how do you design a new piece of wearable te technology? Uh, so this is the, the topic of my speech. I'm going to add into it a bit on the th in the end about where I think this is going for Momoto and for other um, niches of wearable technology. But uh, the major part is about how we thought about the design, how we evolved it through user testing. And there will be, will be a discussion at the end. So if you have any questions, please, please jot them down so, you, so we can have a high quality discussion uh, after me and Mille have, have talked. So Memoto is not only hardware, it's software as well. So um, what the software does is that it handles your photos for you. It organizes them for you. Um, the Momoto camera automatically takes 2,000 photos per day, two photos per minute. You get an overwhelming amount of photos illustrating the timeline that is your day, and you cannot handle that amount of photos. So we'll, we build software that analyzes the stream of photos and recognizes what are the key events. For every event, we bring out a keyframe showing that this was probably uh, one of the important events during the day. And uh, if you're not happy with that stream, we can also filter out the best photos so you can share them to Facebook or Twitter. 
or, or with friends in other ways. So this app is available for, uh, the, the app, I should say, is the, the idea of how we think you should, uh, you, can, you can consume the photos from the motor camera. So it's really the camera and, and the app that is the user interface to this product. And the result is that you can, you can take photos from your own viewpoint, but in an effortless way. For example, these are photos from my daughter's birthday captured from her viewpoint with a Momoto camera. This is from, from her birthday party. And since these photos are taken from her own viewpoint, instead of replacing, with, in time, replacing her own memories of this birthday, the photos will keep her memories alive. And that is really the point. It's the point um, is not to live in the past. It's not to have like a gadget that takes up your time. It, the point is to be able to be present in the, few, in the now, to be present right here, right now, um, without having to think about how, how can I capture this moment. Uh, you don't have to walk around with, your, with a device between you and reality. You can experience reality directly, but still captures, capture the memories from every moment. Of course, there are a lot of issues involved with this. There, we had the, the issue of privacy and integrity at the top of the list when we started designing this camera. We had a, a brainstorming session, a full day, where we just noted down every conceivable um, issue or challenge that we can think about, uh, that we faced uh, before we started the design process. And then we clustered, after having the bra a brainstorming session, we clustered these uh, challenges into, into groups, and we made each group a topic of our design um, process. And we used a process called service design. Uh, service design is a concept that is uh, becoming bigger and bigger. And in, in the academic world, for the last five to, to ten years, it's been a... Um, Increasingly, increasingly important topic of research. And the worldwide conference on service design was actually in my home time in Linköping three years ago. And um, the idea with service design is that you, you don't, don't look at one specific um, uh, user interface, you look at the entire experience of a product or service. So it's not about graphic design or industrial design or um, product development is, is a process where you look at the entire service as a whole when designing it from, from the ground up. And really, um, what happens is that you iterate a lot. You iterate over ideas that you make prototypes of that you test with real customers. So what we did was that we started out um, with the with, uh, basic challenges, and we developed prototypes that allowed us to, uh, to uh, test our ideas and, and refine the, the, through ref to iterative prototyping to refine our ideas and in each step test them towards our product. And uh, so this is what we came up with. Uh, we made about 50 interviews. Uh, about one hour each, in, and we reiterated these interviews in every um, iteration. And uh, what we found was that we could uh, categorize the people we interviewed um, in, in, uh, on two different axes. So the horizontal axis is the division of of people into active and passive in regards on to how they use photos. So this, this part of the research was to find out how do people relate to photos, what do they want to do with them. And some people are active and some are passive, and on the vertical axis are of course private and public. And by doing this, we could segment the users um, into three different categories. The self-promoters, 
the, the memory collectors and the unsentimentalists. The self-promoters are the people that you see a lot posting photos on Facebook and uh, Instagram, for example. They want to show that they have a creative uh, outlook in life by posting a lot of photos. They want to show that they have a beautiful life with, with friends, and it's fulfilling a basic need in their lives to post a lot of photos. And the term self-promoter is, is not something negative. Uh, it's, a, it's a neutral term. And, and uh, when we talked about uh, their idea um, about photos, they, they often cited it as a very good way to, to express themselves in a very short way. And to use self-promoters as a target group for us means that we uh, when, people, when people from this target group uses, uh, use our product, we will see a lot of viral spread. And the opposite case um, is with the, uh, with the other group, uh, the, uh, uh, the memory collectors. They want to keep the photos from the sol from, for themselves. When they share photos, it's only for a very small set of of people, so it might be friends or relatives. And uh, it's really about uh, um, organizing the memories for a small, small set of people and not to promote them to the public. And the advantage of, of this target group is that they are really into um, um, organizing and searching their photos, so they will uh, quickly um, start using new technologies to, to, that allows them to do so. And here's a typical, typical quote uh, from, from this group. I will share lifelong photos with my parents, perhaps a couple of friends. My photos are private, I don't want to show them to the world. And we collected uh, lots and lots of quotes like this that directed our design. And uh, if we look at the last kind of, uh, of users that we explored through this user service, the unsentimentalists, it turns out there, there is a group of people that are passive in the usage of photos, but also um, uh, does, is, is private with the few photos they take. Basically, we found that, that this group of people doesn't have any advantage at all for Momoto as a target group. But uh, it doesn't mean that they don't see photos as valuable at all. What it means is that they have uh, probably someone in their family that is much more active than th themselves in taking photos. So uh, it's they, they often saw that, that they don't have to take photos at all, but not uh, that they don't use photos. It's that often someone else is taking, taking and organizing photos for them. And here's the typical quote from this user group. I want to look forward. There is no point in dwelling in the past. You remember the unique things anyway. Those memories are preserved. And, uh, and as you can see, in, in uh, quantitative terms, um, they are a minority. So, uh, we also looked at what kind of value would people f find in a live logging service. And one, one such value is to document their, their life story. And what, what you can really find when you use the Momoto camera is that you can um, wear it very effortlessly without having to think about it. But uh, when you, when you look back at the photos, it, it has not only captured the, the uh, specific moments where you, where you can find funny photos to share on Facebook, but you can look back at uh, sort of the, the broader scope. A live logging um, service is very much like a mirror, but it's, you don't only see the present, like the, the, this instance, but you can see your entire life mirrored in the live, log, live logging photos.
another example of a value that people talk to us about was that they can see with that live vlogging photos would bring them closer to their friends and relatives. So what we will do with, with the Momoto app that is that we will develop a, a social layer that, that allows people to create albums very much like Spotify playlists that can be private or public and they can be collaborative or only edited by one person that you can share uh, with friends, family or with the public. The last um, um, value, value that people talked about, uh, or another value that people talked about, was the idea that uh, you can learn something about yourself. I wear, uh, besides my motor camera, I wear a basis watch since, since yesterday that show uh, how, my, how my pulse and my, um, how many steps I take each day and how many, how many calories I burn. And uh, I learned from these data, but they are very much uh, one dimensional. When you have photos, uh, you can explore the photos if, from your life um, you can go back and mine that data for knowledge that you didn't previously know that you were going to be looking for. And that can be done manually or with algorithms. And so we will, with time, be able to, to develop the algorithms that can show you statistics on how much time you spend indoors and outdoors. And perhaps if, when you're outdoors, are you spending that time in cities or in green areas? And uh, so the idea is that with captured photos, you can decide afterwards what you are going to look for in the history of, of your live logging data. For me, the idea of keeping memories alive really has to do with valuing the simple moments in life as much as the moments that you can decide beforehand is going to be valuable to preserve. I've, I, have, I have two kids growing up. Uh, they are now seven and nine years old. And it seems like only yesterday they were, they, uh, they were little toddlers. And uh, I really believe that, that uh, the time I spend with them now is going to be precious for me throughout my entire life. And I really want to have more photos of that, my time with them, than than the, the uh, moments that I, or the, sort of the birthday parties and the the Christmases and the family outings that I now take consciously take photos of. I also um, unfortunately lost both my parents uh, when I was younger, um, and when I look back to the photos I have with my time time with them, it's. Uh, we are, we're almost in every photo, we are very happy. We're smiling or giving each other presents on a birthday and stuff like that. But the really important moments can also be when you're sitting down having breakfast or taking a walk in the park, moments that you never think about capturing. And the memories of those, um, of, the, of the people that we love, really, um, you, you think when you experience um, happy or sad times that those memories are going to stay with you forever. But it only takes a couple of years before they are starting, starting to fade. And 10 or 20 years later, it's almost impossible to, to uh, find memories again that you forgot uh, or that you, that you have forgotten. So I'm all about living in the moment, but I really believe that a big value, value of using a live vlogging camera can be to keep the memories alive. And um, we also looked at, which is also part of a service design process, uh, something called a customer journey mapping. And what it, that is, is that you go through every step uh, of, of the way of when a user uh, starts using a product and then keeps using it over days and weeks and months and years. And then we looked at uh, how the, the value perception is spread over that customer journey.
So the result of this design process was um, that we came to a number of decisions regarding how the service sh should be designed, but also how the hardware should be designed. And of course, we need to test those decisions as well. To give an example, what we understood through the service design process was that the balance, we, the most important balance that we needed to find in the design of the hardware is to have the hardware um, designed so that it's both honest and subtle. Honest in the way that it should look like a camera or at least as a recording device. It is not a spy camera and if you want to buy a spy camera that looks like a pen or a packet of gum, then you can find hundreds of those on the web. But our product, we wanted our camera to be honest, but not, um, but not distracting. So it should also be subtle and friendly. And of course, we looked at various shapes and, and forms. And we had an industrial designer uh, that came from Nokia, where he had worked on designing wearable, wearable stuff that is not a mobile camera. So, like Bluetooth headsets and clips and microphones and, and so on. And for every conceivable shape, we, we did mock-ups. Uh, we used 3D printing a lot and, and user testing to come up with how the camera should look. We tried um, to put the camera lens in the middle of the device, but that was really perceived as too distracting. This looks very much like an eye, and when people was wearing this camera, um, they had a, uh, the other people had a hard time talking to them because it, it looked like a third eye that constantly uh, draws your own eyesight to it. So we solved that problem by shifting uh, the, the, the eye of the camera up into the, to, to one corner. And this was much more pleasing to, to people. And, uh, and uh, it became a much, subtle, um, much more subtle look to the, to the device. And then we uh, wanted to look at how can we make sure that people recognize this as a camera. And the answer was actually uh, in the design of the opening of the lens itself. It's very important we found that the the edge around the, the uh, camera lens picks up a, a glare, picks, picks up light from the surroundings, because then people understood that it's a camera. So, it, and I, you can see that in most mobile cameras as well, that there's a metallic ring around the main camera. And uh, that was really key to, to having people recognize uh, Memoto as a camera. So in the end, we also decided to to uh, allow people to be very expressive with themselves, to also offer the camera in different colors, not only as a fashion statement of sorts, but also if you, if you want to shift the balance between subtle and honest yourself, you can choose a different color. Uh, now when I wear the, the gray camera, it's very subtle. If I have the, the white or orange camera, it's much more apparent. So, um, what next? Well, what challenges uh, do we still have? Um, I talked before about uh, the conference in Toronto. What was amazing about the conference was that not only were Amber Case there, the, the um, cyber anthropologist that inspired me on uh, how to design the camera, but her biggest inspiration, Steve Mann, were, was actually the the organizer of that conference. Even more amazing, he had actually invited Marvin Minsky, the father of computer science, uh, to, uh, to uh, appear at the conference and receive an honorable award from the IEEE organization. If you want to have a look at uh, the entire field of uh, what is called the quantified self, which is a subset of life logging. How, how, how quantified self and life logging uh, looks right now, the researchers, enthusiasts, and, and hobbyists, and what they are thinking, you should check out lifeloggersmovie.com, 
which is a documentary film. It's uh, about 25 minutes long uh, that we made um, last year. And, uh, and uh, Steve Mann, uh, the, the man in the photo here, is, uh, is in the movie as well, explaining his view about the difference between life logging, life glogging, and life blogging. We're right now designing the electronics for the camera. Uh, the camera I, I've he here is, is right now taking photos, and, and we're ironing out the last uh, few issues with, with the hardware, and uh, the software is ready in the first version um, one week into September, so it's, we are very, very close into, into um, starting to do real beta testing with the camera. And if any of you happen to be a backer in Kickstarter, talk to me and I can make sure that you are one of the first beta testers uh, that, that get a camera uh, in the middle of September now. And uh, of course, we're also developing the app and, uh, and all the software that goes with the camera. And uh, we're also looking at what kind of uh, accessories we can develop, like a Wi-Fi docking station, um, a waterproof case so people can wear the camera while traveling and such. If you want to, you can uh, place an order of the Momoto camera on memoto.com. If you have any questions or ideas, feel free to contact me. Thank you very much. <laughs>